How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a spectacular day and you guys are all having a great October and hope you guys are going to have a great Halloween this year. And uh, we're going to be talking about Hocus Pocus, the 1993 Halloween classic film. And as always, we'll be talking about positives and negatives and giving you guys my final score at the very end. And uh, let's just dive right in. So first of all, this came out in 1993 and it's about an hour and 33 minutes long. And I'll be completely honest with you guys, a lot of people forget that this movie honestly exists. This is a very underrated Halloween classical film. Also, really quick, if you guys would subscribe, if you guys haven't, also hit that bell notification button. It would be greatly appreciated. Make sure to also head over to Twitch and follow me there, at Douglas447. And back to the review. Uh, Hocus Pocus basically tells the story of three seventeen. I'm sorry, three seven. 17th century Salem witches that are released into the world by children. And basically these witches, they end up trying to cast a spell on the town in order so that way they can all be young again. And uh, they're constantly being thwarted and stopped by these children and a cat. This is honestly one of the greatest family fantasy films. And it's a great watch for Halloween. And it's filled with constant humor. You're constantly going to be laughing both at funny good jokes and funny bad jokes. The film also explains easily and in great detail how magic works in this universe and everyone's backstory is really cool and really unique. Not everyone gets the same amount of treatment but in general it's enough to get the job done and you can get invested in most of the characters. Uh, I enjoy watching this film and I still enjoy watching this film constantly while the witches while the witches are having to learn what it means to live in the modern era and they're exploring the town and whatnot because they've been dead for 300 years so like technology is advanced and watching them figure out what a bus is what they think a school is what they think a concrete road is and all these funny things it's really unique in seeing that play out in this movie uh, the practical effects in this movie are good, but you can tell when they're being used so easily. Uh, the actors and the actresses, they really give 110% to the roles, especially the lead witch. She just, I feel like she had a blast doing this movie, and she really just had fun with her character, and it really shows that she not only was acting, but she was half, having fun in the movie. She really enjoyed her role. Uh, the musical moments in this movie are fantastic, and this film has a very happy conclusion. There's also a lot of adult themes in this movie, and a lot of innuendos for this being a children's movie. So do keep that in mind. This isn't a movie that I can say watch if you're like under 12. I think you should be 12 or 13 before you watch this movie. That way um, you hopefully can understand what's actually happening on screen, and it doesn't probably terrify you as much. Uh, there are some negatives that I do have to discuss. First of all, the witches in this movie aren't scary at all. And instead, they're basically they're strange, they're kind of creepy, they're weird, they're funny. They're just a bunch of oddballs and they're just trying to live forever. They're very generic in that department for villain's sake. But they are villains in the movie, I guess. But they're really not all that terrifying and you're not ever afraid of them. And you know for a fact that while you're watching this movie they're not gonna win you don't get that like thanos experience like from the avengers like he might actually win these witches don't give that sense of oh no the good guys might lose you never get that in this movie uh there are some moments some moments in this movie that drag on for far too long and honestly there are some things in this movie that honestly could have been cut out uh also i don't understand why the black candle that has the ability to resurrect the witches it's just lying in the open and it's not like under lock and key like i get that it's a myth it's a legend but still all myths and legends are based somewhat in reality and based on some sort of fact they don't just you know come out of someone's butt they're, they're not just made up um so in the sense that the candle is just lying out in the open for the Virgin to be able to light and make this movie actually happen is kind of silly and stupid and unrealistic. Uh, it would have been under lock and key. Uh, the witches also in this movie, like I said earlier, they're kind of stupid. They basically try to do the exact same spell 
on a little girl 300 years later. They try to do the exact same three. They, they try to do the exact same thing plot by plot 300 years later. Like, why do you think it's going to work 300 years later after you've been resurrected, witches? It didn't work the first time. What makes you think 300 years later it's going to work now? <laughs> it's kind of just dumb. There's also some really bad transitions between scenes, and it makes the plot at times not feel um, seamless. So do keep, keep that in mind. I feel like there's scenes that got, actually got cut out of the movie, and it's kind of weird to watch it when it happens. Uh, and lastly, Billy the zombie in this movie actually serves no purpose whatsoever. He's supposed to be this like henchman and serve the witches and capture all the children that constantly are thwarting them and preventing the witches from, you know, casting the spell and becoming young. And then at the end of the movie, he just does a complete 360 and it's revealed that he's actually a good zombie and he ends up trying to defeat the witches. And I'm like, when this happens, you're like, what? I thought this was a bad zombie. No, he's a good zombie. What? And he doesn't do anything in the movie. He, he talks and he's just standing around running and walking and he's with the other main characters. But if he wasn't in the film, the plot of the movie would not have changed one bit. Like, you literally can take Billy the zombie out of the movie, and the plot would not be affected whatsoever. So, why is Billy the zombie in this movie? I don't know. He doesn't add anything positive or negative. He just is there for the fact that there's a zombie in this Halloween witch movie, I guess. But overall, guys, if you guys haven't watched Hocus Pocus, it is a good watch. I know it feels like I'm bashing on it, but it is a good watch, and I encourage you guys to check it out. It's a really good Halloween movie, and uh, I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video or stream, whether it be here on Twitch or YouTube at Douglas447. Bye, guys.